um, once upon a mic. Are y'all there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How's it going, y'all? Uh, just chilling. Kind of confused where my uh, other partner is. Oh, okay. Well, well, at least we got one of y'all on here. So. Um, yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> I guess we'll just go ahead and begin, and uh, hopefully hear Jonas uh, as the end. Of- interview progresses um so how did this group known as once upon a mic got started um that would go way back in 2012 actually it all started from a group that was once msf which means music sans frontiers music without borders um me and the other artist that was supposed to be on the interview with me uh, got away from the group and in the meantime did our own thing for four years. Um, it came to a point where I came up with an idea and I was at work and things were just coming into my head and once upon a mic just popped in, and I passed it to uh, one of my friends, see if he liked it, he liked it, and I just ran with it. So you fellas are from Tennessee, Knoxville to be exact, which which obviously Tennessee is known for mostly country music, uh, but obviously for those of that you know, may not know, you know, local music, that's all types to artists. You you never know who they are until you look around. And so, okay, cool, cool, cool. So, how, <clears throat> what has it been like being part of a hip-hop group in a state that's mostly known uh, for country music? Obviously, there's all types of music, but obviously, Tennessee is mostly known for country uh, but what's that been like for for the group, being part of a group, uh, being part of a state that's known for country music? Um, I mean, in all honesty, you got to remember that one of the more legendary groups in hip-hop came from Tennessee, came from Memphis, Tennessee. You know, 3-6 Mafia, Juicy J. Juicy J just dropped an album a couple days ago, or what, yesterday, actually. You know? And... It, it's it's welcoming, surprisingly, but at the same time, there's a lot of a lot of hip hop heads here. You know. Yep. You bring up Thirty Six Mafia. There's also Eight Ball, MJG, Project Pat, Project Pat, the whole Hypnotize Minds crew. Um, obviously Justin Timberlake, also from here. Uh, Started off as a pop, but obviously had country influences. He did the song with Chris Stapleton at the Country Music Awards last year. I was yeah. early this year. I may not sh- be sure, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, Tennessee. They got, they got a lot of talented people out here, not just mainstream rides, but locally as well. Um, oh, yeah. So, you know, Tennessee, they doing big things. And I also forgot to mention G-Unit member Young Buck, also from yep. Tennessee. Oh, as he likes to call it, Cashville, uh, Tennessee. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know. Yeah, he's me as well. Yep. So, how would you best describe Once Upon a Mike's type of music for those who may not have heard it before? Um... What I like to tell people is our music is trying to spread a uh, positive message, but a real message at the same time. More reality rather than talking about money, cars, clothes, so on and so forth. It's not things we have. Why are we going to talk about it? It's not a message that we can actually uh, follow. So why would we put that into the ears of the people? Instead, we're trying to unite the people, bring people together. Like, our our nation as a whole is at crisis one way or another. And 
we want to we want to reach out to the individuals that are like minded to us to make sure that they know that there's someone else that's trying to do the same thing they are, bring people together. You know, the one thing about hip hop, there's always this perception that when you hear it, whether it's radio or you know at the clubs, rappers tend to talk about money, cars, clothes, women. That seems to be the perception, but there's more to hip hop than that. Obviously, the radio stations they play songs that fans want to hear, and yeah. the majority of the songs are about what they have and what they can get and things like that. But there are artists out there that are, you know, conscious artists that speaks about tough issues and what's going on in the world, things like that. Um, and I guess no matter how many artists that you get, as far as those who are voiced talking about the obvious, it seems like that's even more artists that talks about the obvious. Of uh, course. It's, it's very unfortunate. It's definitely had to be frustrating, um, not just to fans, but for artists who are voiced talking about that. And yet, radio stations, social media, they post stuff about the aforementioned stuff. So, it's the... Exactly. I mean, the thing is, I understand why people do it. It sells, makes money, so on and so forth. But we're really not trying to make money. We're really not trying to make fame. We're just doing it. We're purely doing it for the people. You know, for the individual. That's why I always like to say. And as a fan of hip hop, um, I appreciate artists like you guys for what y'all bring, for what y'all willing to 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 rap about. Um, it, it's um, uh, and I guess people who talk down on hip hop, even they don't listen to it enough. Or don't really understand there is an entertainment value to it as well like I remember hearing Fat Joe at an interview and he t talks about you know there is some entertainment value to it as well so obviously there's a lot of artists out there that tends to quote unquote over exaggerate what they talk about yeah uh, so that also plays a role into it but for for a guy like Fat Joe to be that brutal honest about that, you know, it's just something that a lot of people already knew. But for a guy of his caliber to say, hey, don't get too caught up on what you hear. They may not necessarily have what they have. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So, uh, but props to Joe, uh, who a good year. Uh, and, and Wemmy as well. So... For for you and, and for the group, what do y'all have coming up uh, as it pertains to new music or upcoming shows or maybe a new album, mixtape, etc.? What do y'all have coming up as we get near the to the second half of 2016? Um, currently, what we're doing is we're just trying to build our uh, catalog, you know, continuously making songs, putting out music every week. Um... I'm also working on a newer website. We have a website. It's through uh, Reverb Nation. You know, it's onceuponamike.com. Um, so I'm working on a newer website so that my producers can get out there. I have two producers under uh, Once Upon a Mic. Uh, Code Black is one of them. The other one is uh, Ngot. That's E-M-G-O-T. Um, they're two really good producers, you know, and I want I want them both to get out there so that other people can see what I'm working with. I mean, they see what I'm with on my songs, but I want them to be able to hear each instrument that these producers use. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely, man. And I've got a chance to listen to some of the songs on Reverb Nation. 
in the days and the weeks leading up to this interview and I'm definitely have become a fan um and quite honestly I've avoided listening to the mainstream music I live in Kentucky and they have quite a hip hop scene out here in the Lexington area that's where I live and that just seems to be my focus on as a fan listening to more local artists go to their shows and support them and there's a lot of talented artists out there and I guess the thing is people may not be too familiar with local artists I mean I guess people tend to forget that a lot of the artists that you do hear on the radio they started off on the local music scene in their areas they started off performing in small shows small audiences small venues trying to get heard trying to get that extra buck or whatever you know and I don't know it's just it's just hard to to understand why people don't support local music as much as they support mainstream music or whatever when you don't really know those people in person but what can you do yeah I mean it it really all it all buckles down to to envy to be quite honest because when you see local artists you're like yeah you're you're like you and me you're a normal person but when people see celebrities they're like oh you're living a whole better lifestyle than I am I want that lifestyle I want to follow that lifestyle you know mm -hmm. like yeah, I, that's that's pretty much what it boils down to. Um, what do you have and what can you bring? Uh, oh, yeah. And if you're not on, on mainstream radio, you're pretty much an afterthought to a lot of people. So it's, it's very unfortunate, but, you know, people have their own lives to live, and they're going to do what they want to do. You know exactly so, live and let learn yeah so that's definitely a grind for a local artist to to climb uh to get themselves heard um who do you consider your biggest influences musically uh, it could be hip-hop it could be any genre uh who do you consider your biggest <laughs> musical influences um some of my big, biggest influences for me personally would be, uh, you know, Red Man, Method Man, um, Tupac and Biggie are two obvious ones. Eminem for myself. Uh, for Code Black, you have um, Kanye West, you know, Wiz Khalifa. And he, he, he's actually from uh, Tennessee himself. So black, so he's big into all types of Tennessee artists. Cool, cool, and um, I, I've definitely listened to all those artists at some point. <laughs> uh, I miss the old Kanye. I miss the the soul beats and and when he they have that big of an ego now. I mean, he didn't have that big of an ego then that he had right now, just making beats, and he raps on them too, and he did beats for other artists. Um, I want that old Kanye back, but uh, that's that Kanye is long gone, <laughs> uh, and for obvious reasons. But uh, but I guess what people is is about confidence is about believing yourself. And if you don't believe in yourself, then who will? Um, it's just, uh, it's big enough people who believe in themselves. Um, sadly, as of late last night, Muhammad Ali, the famous boxer, greatest of all time, he passed away. Uh, yeah. And he's a... Born, born and raised in this state of Kentucky, which is where I'm at right now. Uh, known for his interviews, his quotes, his rhymes. I mentioned on Facebook 
early this afternoon. He was hip hop before hip hop existed. Oh yeah. And uh, he was just very clever, very witty, and he, you know, he stayed true to himself. He talked about how great he is, and when he beats you down, he's gonna let you know about it. Um, what What are your thoughts on Muhammad Ali? And the legacy that he has left, not just for his career, not just for what he's done civil rights activists, but just <clears throat> all phases of entertainment. Because he definitely left a huge mark. He's been influenced by all types of entertainers, from sports to music. What's your thoughts on, on Muhammad Ali and, and his legacy? Muhammad Ali is definitely a legend. Um you know, whether it be a boxing legend or a wordsmith, like you were saying, you know, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, your hands can't hit where your eyes can't see. It's stuff like that. And he definitely in, influenced a lot of people upon his humbleness. He was a incredibly humble individual to his people, you know. And to be the greatest to live as a boxer and still be that humble is amazing. It's, it's nuts to think about. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's really my thought. It's, it's terrible that we lost such a incredible individual, but yeah, Absolutely. Um, he definitely left his mark, that's for sure. It was just hard to watch him on TV, how he'd be shaking and things like that, how boxing had truly impacted him. He was a, an aggressive boxer, and with aggression means you're going to take a lot of hits to the head. And oh, yeah. he clearly took a lot of hits to the head. And he's fought this disease for several years now. Um, and Friday, and Friday things they look good, and now it's it's confirmed that he's he passed away. Um, but he he will be remembered for not just for his boxing ability, but for the words that came out of his mouth, whether it was towards an opponent. Whether it's towards a, a it reporter, he his he left a huge mark, not just in sports but entertainment altogether. And there were there will, there will be a lot of great athletes, a lot of great entertainers, but there will never be another Muhammad Ali, considering what he has done uh, for the for for. For his people, for everyone, who they had a voice. He was yeah. he was the voice of the voiceless, for sure. Oh yeah, um, <clears throat> by far. If you want to learn more info for Once Upon a Mic, check them out on onceuponamic.com. They also on Weverb Nation, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, support these fellas, man, for real. These these guys, they they got something good going musically they got they got uh good messages messages behind their music and it's just a matter of them getting heard uh and I, and I get it there's a lot of artists out there locally and mainstream but i'm gonna really need for y'all to check out once upon a mic these fellas I appreciate are, it. these fellas are on to huge things and they they got plenty of music for you to listen to, um, especially if you need an alternative from everything else that's out there right now. Uh, so check them out once upon a mic. And I want to thank you, man, for being on the show this evening. And uh, truly appreciate you calling in and uh, continued success. And uh, thank you again for being on. I appreciate it. We're humble for the opportunity, you know. Well said, and I'm truly humbled to, to have you guys on. You all have a great night and have a great weekend. You too.
Alright, bye-bye. That was Once Upon a Mic.